My name is Jacqueline Alexander Sykes. I am the director of St. Omo Village. It was founded in 1969 by Roderick Sykes and Roselle Sykes. This is about using what you have where you are. Okay. I've been here since 79. So of the 52 years, I've been here 42. Roderick wanted to create a space where all are welcome, no matter whether you're homeless or have all the money. A space where you're welcomed for your heart and for your spirit, not what you have or don't have. Roderick's dream evolved into reality. St. Elmo Village not only became the creative heartbeat of Mid-City Los Angeles, but it was also a refuge for those seeking community and acceptance. I landed at St. Elmo Village at the beginning of the millennium. It was an artist's residence, and I thought it would be a great place to rebirth myself creatively. My father used to come in the 70s. He brought me to the village, and immediately I took to it. My mom moved to LA, and this is one of the first places she found community in. I had my fifth birthday party here, went to the art classes every Saturday. When you feel like you don't fit anywhere, it was a place where you fit. You could be yourself and express yourself. You can let your heart be open so that we can figure out how we can be the best human beings we can be. To truly understand how badly a sanctuary of art and humanity was needed, one has only to look at the events that preceded the opening of St. Elmo and the pain a community was brutally endured. The story of police brutality quickly spread through the community. Coming out of Watts Riots era, there was a need for community involvement and community centers because everybody was like sick of not having. And then this place came in 69 was an answer to that, to say, hey, you know what? We're gonna focus on what we can do. Their spirit was one of build up where you are. Black people, people of color, creating something and doing something positive negates all of that stuff that says the opposite. When we see reflections of ourselves, it lets us know somewhere deep within us, I can do that too. Man, there's no pink. I'm gonna need brown for the sight. It's been great to have my son be a part of St. Elmo Village and to see him express himself through art. It means a lot to me to see him be here and see the next generation thrive. I don't want to, I call it X art. Children shouldn't have to pay to be creative. All of our workshops are free. Through the years, we've offered a variety of workshops, but right now we offer painting and drawing, photography, Girls Who Code Club. We've had computer graphics workshops for a long time, but we're evolving into more of the technical aspects because that's what kids need. I mean, the first painting of art, and I just put it colors, I just put it colors. Roderick created and was here because he needed it. If he needed it, he knew somebody else needed it as well. And I don't think he ever really realized the depth of what he was doing. Five years ago, Roderick was diagnosed with Alzheimer's and vascular dementia. And everybody kind of rallied around me to give me the strength to move forward and to take care of Roderick and to take care of the village. I miss him so much. <laughs> what I love about Jackie is she shows you how to stand up and fight even when things are tough. And if I can be a part of helping her to move on and move forward, I'll do it with every ounce that I have in me. St. Elmo Village is bigger than all of us. I'm not sure what my strokes will be here, how I'm going to paint or repaint the village. Right now I'm just working at, okay, let's keep this going. <laughs>
After 52 years, Roderick's legacy remains, and his words continue to guide St. Elmo's Village into the future. We are an example. We are an example. We are an example to the community of what you can do. We're an example to the community of what you can do when you don't say. When we don't say, I can't.